Hey everyone welcome to fuzzy logic lectures in this video we will be discussing about what is fuzzy logic introduction to classical sets and fuzzy sets and extension of classical sets finally we will see some solved examples on the topic so let us start our lecture what is fuzzy logic The term fuzzy logic was introduced by Lotfi Sade in 1965 with the proposal of fuzzy set theory. The term fuzzy refers to things which are not clear or are vague. In the real world, many times we encounter situations where we can't determine whether the state is true or false. In such cases, fuzzy logic provides a very valuable flexibility for reasoning. so it resembles human reasoning in many ways and hence we can consider uncertainties or inaccuracies of any situation now before we dive deeper into this lecture let us understand what is crisp value the term crisp means precise and it deals with values that has a strict boundary that is true or false the value should be either true or false to be called as crisp value and it cannot contain any in between values coming to boolean system truth values one represents absolute truth value and zero represents absolute false value that is one is true and zero is false however in the case of fuzzy logic systems we have intermediate values present which are partially true and partially false Now let us consider an example to show how boolean system truth value works and how a fuzzy logic system works in this question you can see that the condition is is the car moving fast in the boolean system having crisp values you can see two solutions yes and no but in a fuzzy logic system with fuzzy values you can see that there are many solutions the car can be moving extremely fast very fast fast slow or extremely slow so you can say that in a boolean system having crisp values you only have absolute true value and absolute false value but in a fuzzy logic system you have this partially true and partially false values as you can see extremely fast very fast and fast are somewhat close to the absolute true value so you can say that these are partially true Similarly slow and extremely slow are somewhat close to the absolute false value therefore you can say that these are partially false so that is the basic difference between fuzzy logic systems and boolean systems now we will talk about membership functions membership functions were first introduced in 1965 by lotfi sade in his first research paper fuzzy sets they characterize fuzziness that is all the information in a fuzzy set no matter whether the elements in the fuzzy sets are discrete or whether they are continuous so essentially they represents the degree of truth in a system for instance in the previous example for a boolean system having crisp values the solution no represents absolute false value therefore the membership value over here is zero whereas in the case of true value which is yes the membership value is 1 coming to the case of fuzzy logic systems it is somewhat different since we are dealing with partially true and partially false values we may have membership values like 0.9 0.8 0.6 0.3 and 0.1 now these values are assigned based on the degree of truth in the fuzzy input with respect to the fuzzy sets as you can see that extremely fast is more close to absolute true value so i have assigned it a value of 0.9 which is close to 1 in similar fashion extremely slow is close to the absolute false value therefore i have assigned it a value of 0.1 which is close to 0 So this is how fuzzy logic systems take up partial values and for each partial output they'll be having a membership value assigned to it. 
therefore you can say that physiologic systems are governed by membership functions let us now move on to introduction to classical sets a classical set is a collection of distinct objects and it has crisp values for example a set of marks of students with marks above 75 so if you write this as a which is a classical set then a can have values such as 76 80 90 95 and so on now each individual entity in a set is called a member or an element of the set that is 76 80 90 95 are called as elements or members of the set a therefore you can say that the classical set is defined in such a way that it has two groups members and non members here all the marks above 75 comes under the members of set a but any mark which is less than or equal to 75 they are called the non members of the set a so you can say that in the case of classical sets partial membership does not exist there are only members and non members now let s be a classical set the membership function that can be used to define the set s is given by chi s of x where chi is used to denote a classical set is equal to 1 when x belongs to s and 0 when x does not belong to s so this is the definition of the classical set s yes. in our example set a an element belongs to set a if its value is greater than 75 and the membership value for all elements belonging to set a is 1 that is chi a of 76 is equal to 1 chi a of 80 is equal to 1 chi a of 90 is equal to 1 and so on in similar fashion if we take chi a of 40 we know that the value 40 is not an element of set a so chi a of 40 is equal to 0 because the membership value for non members is 0 now another important concept that you need to learn is cardinality cardinality of a set is the number of elements of the set and this number is also referred to as cardinal number let us take an example suppose you have a set b and it has elements a b c and d then you can say that the cardinality of set b is 4 why because there are four elements in the set therefore in short the total number of elements of a set constitutes cardinality and in this example the number of elements is 4 therefore the cardinal number over here is 4 okay now we will move on to fuzzy sets an extension of classical sets fuzzy sets can be considered as an extension and a gross oversimplification of the classical sets we can understand fuzzy sets in the context of set memberships basically it allows partial membership which means that it contains elements that have varying degrees of membership in a set now in the previous example under fuzzy logic systems we have seen varying degree of membership like 0.9 0.8 0.6 0.3 and 0.1 in various fuzzy sets so these represents the partial values and they constitute the degree of membership of the input element in each of these fuzzy sets that is what is meant by this particular line now we can understand the difference between classical sets and fuzzy sets classical set contain elements that satisfy precise properties of membership while fuzzy set contain elements that satisfy imprecise properties of membership this property becomes more evident when you see the graphs for fuzzy set and classical set so let us consider two graphs one for fuzzy set and one for classical set as you have learned just now the membership value for a classical set is denoted by chi of x and x over here is the element 
In similar fashion, the membership value for a fuzzy set is denoted by mu of x. We will learn about it in a bit. Now, the graph of a fuzzy set may look like this, whereas the graph of a classical set may look like this. The graph of a fuzzy set looks like this because these particular regions over here, they represent the partial membership values. Partial membership values. But in the case of classical set, we are only allowed to have 0 and 1. Therefore, you get a graph like this. You will understand this better when we discuss examples later in this video. Coming to the mathematical definition of fuzzy sets, a fuzzy set A in the universe U can be defined as a set of ordered pairs and it can be represented mathematically as A, where this tilde sign denotes that A is a fuzzy set, is equal to ordered pair Y mu A of Y, where Y is the element or value and mu A of Y is the membership function and U is the universe of discourse. An important point to note here is that the value of mu A of Y lies in the range of 0 to 1 with 0 and 1 included. In our example discussed earlier, extremely fast, very fast, fast, slow and extremely slow, these are the different fuzzy sets just like our set A. And we can represent these sets on a fuzzy graph as a function on a speed scale. So let us do that. Ok, so I have an x axis which represents speed and a y axis which represents membership value. As you can see, x axis has speeds marked in kilometer per hour. Now let us try to map our fuzzy sets into this graph. Now everyone agrees that any speed below 10 km per hour is an extremely slow speed, right? That means all the speeds between 0 and 10 km per hour are members of the set extremely slow. Ok, since everyone are in agreement that these speeds are extremely slow, we can give the membership values of these speeds as 1 in the set extremely slow. So we can write that mu extremely slow of 0 km per hour is equal to 1 that is the membership value of 0 km per hour is 1 in the set extremely slow. Now similarly mu extremely slow of 1 km per hour is also 1. So the membership value of 1 km per hour is 1 in the set extremely slow. Likewise, all the speeds up to mu extremely slow 10 km per hour is 1. Therefore, the membership curve for the fuzzy set extremely slow has membership value equal to 1 for all the speeds in the range of 0 to 10 km per hour. Ok, now the question is, what about 11 km per hour? Does that belong to the set extremely slow? Well, 11 km per hour is definitely faster than 10 km per hour. But it is still pretty slow, right? So we say 11 km per hour is not a full member of the fuzzy set extremely slow, but it is a partial member and let's say 90% belongs to it. So we can write mu extremely slow of 11 km per hour is equal to 0.9 that is the speed 11 km per hour has a membership value of 0.9 in the fuzzy set extremely slow. Let us mark it on the graph. So 0.9 lies somewhere here right. Now using similar arguments we can say that 15 km per hour is only a 50% member of the set extremely slow. So mu extremely slow 15 km per hour is equal to 0.5 and let us mark it on the graph. What about 20 km per hour? 
we can all agree that 20 km per hour is not an extremely slow speed anymore. So we can write mu extremely slow 20 km per hour is equal to 0. That is 20 km per hour does not belong to the set extremely slow. Therefore, our fuzzy set extremely slow can be mapped like this. And the membership value of all the speeds above 20 km per hour is also zero in the fuzzy set extremely slow. Therefore, we get a flat line like this. Okay, so let us write this down. This blue graph represents the fuzzy set extremely slow. Now, using the same arguments, I am mapping the fuzzy set slow. Let us say the speeds in the range of 20 to 30 km per hour are full members and the speeds in the range of 10 to 20 and 30 to 40 are partial members and the membership value is 0 for all other speeds. Okay. By the way, I chose this speed range randomly. You are free to choose your own range of speeds for the fuzzy set slow. So, this represents the set slow. Now, in similar fashion, I will draw the fuzzy set fast. So, we have our fuzzy set fast. So, this is fast. Next, we have very fast. This is very fast. Finally, we have extremely fast. So, extremely fast. Now, if we give a speed, say 65 km per hour, as an input to our fuzzy system, it will give out the membership value of 65 km per hour in each of these sets. So, based on the curves we defined, the membership value of 65 km per hour is 0 in the fuzzy set extremely slow. So, mu extremely slow of 65 km per hour is 0. We can write that down here also. Similarly, the membership value of 65 km per hour in the fuzzy set slow is also 0. So, mu slow 65 km per hour is also 0. But when it comes to the fuzzy set fast, we can see that 65 km per hour is a partial member and its membership value is 0.5. Therefore, mu fast 65 km per hour is 0.5. Here also 0.5. If you check again, you can see that 65 km per hour is also a partial member of the fuzzy set very fast. Here also the membership value is 0.5. Therefore, mu very fast of 65 km per hour is 0.5. We can write that down here also. Finally, as you can see, 65 km per hour is not a member of the fuzzy set extremely fast. Therefore, mu extremely fast 65 km per hour is 0. Here also we can write it as 0. Okay, so I hope you got a general idea of what a fuzzy set is and what are membership values. One important point to remember is that there are many curves used to define fuzzy sets. Here we have used trapezoid shaped curves. Earlier we have seen triangular shaped curves. We can also define fuzzy sets using sigmoid or Gaussian functions. Therefore, we should choose the type of curve which suits our application. Okay. Now coming to the representation of fuzzy sets, there are two ways to represent them. In the case where universe U is discrete and finite, a fuzzy set A can be represented as membership value of Y1 in fuzzy set A by Y1 plus membership value of Y2 in fuzzy set A 
by y2 plus membership value of y3 by y3 plus etc up to membership value of yn by yn where y1, y2, y3 etc to yn are elements of fuzzy set A. Now this can also be represented as sigma i equal to 1 to n membership value of y i by y i. An important point to note here is that these plus signs does not mean actual addition. They are just a representation symbol for the collection of elements of y. Same is the case for these symbols. They are not actual divisions or fractions. Okay. There is one more way to represent the same fuzzy set A. It can be written as A equal to ordered pair of y1 membership value of y1 in A comma ordered pair y2 membership value of y2 in A etc till yn comma membership value of yn in A. Okay, so these are the two ways to represent a fuzzy set. Let us take an example so that this concept is clear. Suppose we have a fuzzy set A with four members 1, 2, 3 and 4 and the corresponding membership values of members is 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.6 and 0 0.9. Using the first representation we learned, fuzzy set A can be written as Membership value of element 1 which is 0 0.1 by element 1 plus membership value of element 2 which is 0 0.3 by 2 plus 0 0.6 by 3 plus 0 0.9 by 4. Now using our second way to represent the same fuzzy set A can be written as 1, 0.1, 2, 0.3, 3, 0.6 and 4, 0.9 that is as ordered pair of element and its membership value. Next when it comes to universe u which is continuous and infinite we will replace the summation symbol with the integral symbol. That is, fuzzy set A is equal to integral i equal to 1 to n mu A of yi by yi. Again, I would like to emphasize that this integration symbol does not mean actual integration, but simply represents the collection of each element in the set. Now, before ending the lecture, let us see a small example to show how crisp and fuzzy set representations differ for the same situation. Let Z be a set named numbers close to zero. Define fuzzy and crisp sets for Z and show the membership curve in a graph. Ok, so let us first define a fuzzy set. We will use a triangular curve for this which is centered at zero. Like this. This curve makes sense, right? As you can see, numbers close to zero has high membership values and the membership value progressively decreases on either side as we move away from zero. Now that we have finalized the membership curve, let us define the curve mathematically. So we can write mu z of x equal to zero when x less than minus one, which is clear in this graph. Coming to this region, the equation of the straight line is y equal to x plus one. Since here y axis is mu of x, we can write mu of x equal to x plus 1 for minus 1 less than or equal to x less than 0. Similarly, for the region between 0 and 1, we have x minus 1. 0 less than or equal to x less than 1 and is equal to 0 when x is greater than 1. So, this is the membership function for the fuzzy set Z which we have defined here. Alternatively, we can also use Gaussian function to define another fuzzy set for Z like this. 
this curve can be mathematically written as mu z of x equal to e raised to minus x square where x belongs to r. So this is another membership function for the set z. Here you should note that even though both these membership functions are used to characterize the same description numbers close to zero, both of these are different fuzzy sets. So ideally we should use different labels like mu z1 of x and mu z2 of x here. Here also z1 and z2. Okay. Another important point to note is that the properties that a fuzzy set is used to characterize are usually fuzzy. For example, numbers close to zero is not a precise description, right? Therefore, we may use different membership functions to characterize the same description. But the membership functions defined are not fuzzy themselves. They are precise mathematical functions. So you can see that once a fuzzy property is represented by a membership function, nothing is fuzzy anymore. Therefore, by characterizing the fuzzy description with a membership function, we have actually defuzzified the fuzzy description. A common misconception many of us have is that fuzzy set theory tries to fuzzify the world. But what I explained just now shows otherwise. Fuzzy sets are used to defuzzify the world. Okay. Now, a doubt many of us will be having is how to determine the membership function curves. Well, sadly there is no one way to do it. One approach is to talk with experts in the field and use their knowledge to create a membership function. Another approach is to gather lots of data related to our application and use that data to figure out a crude membership function and then fine tune it. Ok, so we have defined fuzzy sets for Z. Now let us define a crisp set. For that we can simply define chi z of x equal to 1 when minus 0.2 less than or equal to x less than or equal to 0.2 and is equal to 0 otherwise. And the graph will look like this. 0.2 sorry minus 0.2 here 0.2 and 0 for all other values of x. Here we have defined that any number between minus 0.2 and 0.2 is close to 0 and all other numbers are not. This is the drawback of crisp sets. They fail to represent the reality of the world. That's all for this lecture. I hope that all the concepts taught in this lecture are clear to all of you. If you have any doubts, feel free to ask them in the comments. Either me or some other viewer will surely help you out. If you found this lecture useful, please like the video and support us by subscribing to our channel. Thank you for watching properly and have a great day.